I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. Can we say that that's true about our lives as individual believers? Is that really our end purpose and goal? I know it's convicting to my heart because there's all kinds of other purposes and other things that I would rather pursue on most days. We started asking the question, is this true of our church? What's church for? Church is for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, right? Church is for glorifying and praising and worshiping God, not just on Sunday morning, but with everything we do. How do we do that? We can't say we're being obedient to the God that we worship unless we're making disciples. We can't make disciples unless we are verbally sharing the good news of what he's done for us with the people in our lives. Are there things about our church that are getting in the way of the message? These are the kinds of questions we started asking a couple of years ago as we set out to plan and to ask the Lord to lead this through this period of shifting and changing and new leadership and all that was coming. And before we get into all that, I, I, I want to read the last section in verse 24, 25, 26, and 27. It says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and I keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. What do runners do? They pack a backpack with snacks and, you know, some, <laughs> a little bit of thermos of coffee, you know, take their laptop in case they want to watch a Netflix, you know. What do runners do? No, they, they take all of that away. They get rid of all of the distractions. They find the most comfortable clothes that they can run in, and they're laser-focused on the prize. Paul said that's how we ought to be. That's how we ought to live. My parents, uh, I'm the oldest of nine brothers, and they learned early that if you, uh, it, anything can be a race. Um, if you've ever raised sons, you know what I'm talking about, right? Because little boys love competition, and they love just, you know, burning energy, right? So my parents used to do this thing. Uh, late at night, right before bed, they'd be like, all right, uh, this is a race. Let's see how many people, or uh, let's see how many toys you can pick up in 60 seconds. Go! And we would all sprint across the room, and it was like a fury of you know, feet and arms, and people were throwing toys in the toy box from across the room. And, and, he, and, and, and what Paul's saying is, you guys know how a race works, right? How about we run like we're in a race? How about we have a little urgency? I think what's happened in the American church is we've lost our sense of urgency. We've lost track of the fact that the people that are on our list we're praying for to receive the gospel, they're not guaranteed forever, just like we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We, we get lost in, in all kinds of ter, uh, secondary and tertiary issues and fighting with each other and squabbling over all kinds of nonsense, and it's all distracting. And what Paul says, if you're going to run the race, run it like you want to win. Because the prize is getting to spend eternity enjoying the blessings of, the Messiah, of, of, our, of our risen Lord and Savior with people that we got to be a part of bringing them into the kingdom. There's no leadership here at Grace that is, in any of our churches, that is uh, overly qualified. I'll put it to you that way. We're all really young leaders. Um, but we're put in this position by a group of elders, by 
leaders who have a fire and a passion for all the things we just talked about, to keep the mission central but be willing to adapt our methods because the time is short and because the mission is too important. We're talking about eternity. We're talking about lost souls. And so a few years ago when this group, ragtag group of really young leaders, Michael, Oren, myself, led by Pastor Matt and, and his direction as he kind of keeps us together as a group, we started talking about these questions. What kinds of churches do we want to build for the future? Because we have a great foundation in each of, in each of these places in different ways. You know, the Lakeland and the Ocala churches are meeting a couple dozen people each in paid-for buildings, right? So, like, not to get all church business on you, but, like, there is incredible potential for us to do a lot of ministry in places that are growing for a very little amount of money compared to, like, going and starting a new church, right, in those places. Do you know Lakeland is, like, number two fastest-growing city in America right now? Do we think people need to know about Jesus there? <laughs> so, like, we're trying to build this sense of urgency, that this mission is too important for distractions. And one of the things that kept coming up as we were planning, writing these mission, writing the mission statement, working on these values, asking the Lord, what kind of church do we need to be for this new season, this next season as these new leaders are leading, one of the things that kept coming up was our name. And uh, we both, all three churches currently have gr the word grace in our name somewhere. We're Grace Church of Sebring. Uh, Ocala is Grace Church of Ocala. Lakeland has an older name from an older era in our fellowship that's Lakeland Grace Brethren Church. Kind of a mouthful. And, and as we started talking about like inviting our neighbors to meet and follow Jesus and making disciples and, and, and in these communities, one of the things we kept running into was the challenge that in all three of these locations, there were multiple other churches that had the name Grace. Um, this is a, not a uniquely Sebring problem. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. You've had the conversation 14 times with your coworker or somebody who's new to town. Hey, what church do you go to? I go to Grace Church. Oh, which church do you mean, right? I've had it a bunch of times. And, um, and so it's not, but it's not uniquely a Sebring problem. It's an Ocala problem and it's a Lakeland problem. And as we talk about being a together a family of churches that wants to plant more churches in the future, it's only going to continue to be a problem because Grace is a really popular name for a church. And so Ocala, back in 2020, uh, the beginning of 2020, was praying through what they were going to do about this. And it was pretty easy for them. They've got a small group of uh, a couple of families, tw you know, anywhere between 20 and 40 people coming on a Sunday morning. So for them to make a change wasn't a big thing, you know, and they were excited. Uh, they chose the name Neighborhood Church, and that was all based on that mission statement that we've been saying for a year now, right? Inviting our neighbors to meet and follow Jesus. It all comes out of that greatest commandment, to love our neighbor as ourselves. So it's a scriptural word. It communicates something, something different, and something, but also it communicates it in a way that actually will be able to be distinguished from other churches that we like, but aren't our church, right? In Ocala, that was their whole, th whole concept. And so, Neighborhood Church Ocala. After a couple of months, as Lakeland started their core team meetings, getting ready for their relaunch, which is going to happen next summer, they started praying through ideas, and they couldn't think of a better name. And so, they decided to go with Neighborhood Church as well. And so, now we have... Some of you have known this, like the, the social media stuff and all that stuff has changed for those two churches. And so this got us thinking around here because we've had the same issue here. And we want ultimately for us to be unified in this mission to invite our neighbors to meet and follow Jesus. I got to tell you, it was one of the hardest decisions. It was the hardest decision, I think, we've had to make as a leadership team in my time here uh, because the word grace... I grew up in the Grace Brethren Fellowship. I grew up in Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church. 
I have tons of affection, tons of connections, love for that. By the way, none of this changes our connection to the fellowship, right? It's just looking at how can we best communicate about who we are. So after, after some months of discussion and some prayer, a lot of prayer, um, it was decided in, in August, on August 15th, the elder board voted to approve the plan to rebrand our church to Neighborhood Church Sebring. And so it's been a fruit of months and years of conversations and, and we believe that as we invite our neighbors to meet and follow Jesus, there could be no better name for us to take on to clarify that as our mission and to, and to ultimately do a better job of communicating, not just internally, not, it's not primarily about us, because remember what we just talked about, right? It's primarily about making sure that nothing gets in the way of the proclamation of the gospel to the people in our community. So all three of our churches will share the same name and the same, same logo. I know it's probably familiar to a lot of you because you've seen it on social media for Lakeland and Ocala. Um, you know, change is never easy. Um, I am a person who dislikes change, um, but the thing that makes change different is when you find out that it was for a purpose. And so that was part of our decision to share this with you guys in this way in connection to this values conversation to hopefully help you to see where this has come from because like I, like nothing makes me more crazy than like changing um like rearranging furniture in your house does anybody else hate that it's like i'm used to it this way why do we have to change it right well, maybe the only reason you change it is for a purpose, right? Because you have something else you want to put in there, some new thing you're trying to do. And so it's not change for change's sake. It's change with a purpose behind it. And, you know, the, here's another thing to think about. We serve a changeless God who is all about change, right? Change in our hearts, change in our communities, change in our church. And so... We know this is a lot to wrap your heads around. This change is not going to occur overnight. Right? We have a plan over the next couple of months. We, uh, we kind of enter in this morning now that we've sort of broke the seal and let you guys know what's going on and, and shared it with not just you, but through the technology and stuff, like with our community for the first time. Um, the plan is to now through the end of the year start changing the, the, all the things that the name is on, right? Because that's a lot of stuff. Uh, and so there's going to be a lot of work going on behind the scenes to get all that ready. And then January 1st, 2022, is going to be the, the sort of flip the switch. That's when we're officially going to adopt it and start using it on a regular basis. And what we want to do is promote and publicize. We've not been a church that does a lot of that, but we see this as sort of a unique opportunity to hopefully share with our community, the people we're called to reach, hey, something's going on here. It's not a new church. It's the same church renewed mission and a new name. And so to do that through January, uh, basically through Easter, and then to use Easter, because Easter is always a good launching point for church, right? Because that's the time most people are most likely to come if they're not already plugged in and regular, regularly attending. We want to use Easter as sort of a grand reopening uh, with a new name, new logo, renewed vision and mission. A couple of things before I go, and I know this has been long, but there's just a lot to share. This is like literally years of conversations trying to wrap, help you guys see that in a short period of time. Um, the first thing, oh, I forgot about this. This is cool. So uh, remember I said about Easter 2022? Okay, so this is a printed out uh, like bulletin thingy, uh, old school from back in the day. Um, it's probably kind of hard for some of you to read, but at the top here, what it says is Sebring Grace Brethren Church Dedication Sunday. And this was the printoff. Pastor Matt found it in the records back in the office somewhere this week. Um, of This is the announcement of Dedication Sunday. It's April 3rd and 4th, the year they didn't print on it. I wish they would have, but it was 1982, which was 40 years from this Easter. So this relaunch, all of this conversation is happening at an anniversary point for us 
where they, this is where they dedicated this church, uh, the, basically the land, they dedicated it for ministry for the first time. I think that's kind of cool. One of those little, like, God moments. Um, practical ways that you can help. The first thing is pray. I know that um, we, we know ultimately that God is leading in this whole conversation, and we want him to continue to do so. So pray for unity within our church, but also be praying for the community and for the people that may be reached through this new thing that's happening. Um, the second thing is be patient and be positive. Um, we have had, as a leadership team, a lot of time to process this. So I know we're going to be sound real excited, and some of you guys just aren't. Like it's new, and it's different, and you don't like it, and we under, I understand that. But here's the thought process behind be patient. It took time for us to wrap our head around the idea, right? And it kind of it grew on some of us. It wasn't initially like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and so give yourself some time to process it before you react is what I'm saying. Be patient. Um, and also try to be positive. <laughs> it sounds like something my mom would say. Go mom. And then the last thing is talk about it in the community. Like, you guys are the, the real face of our church to the community. I hope that that, 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 that like, got your attention. Like, p- people know you come to church here, so how you act, what you say, you know, it has an impact on the message and on the mission. It's always true. Um, but when you talk about it, we want you guys to, to be, uh, we ultimately know that all the advertisement, all that stuff's great. People talking about it in their workplace, people talking about it with their friends, sharing what's going on here. That's going to be the real key to this going a way we think it can go, or a way we hope and praying that it goes, that it's a way God uses to reach more people. I'll just close with this. How can they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? How are they to preach unless they are sent?